Hey guys, welcome back to Ari the Stag. TR Tony here, sat in this wonderful environment. You can see behind me, this is the River Stour, very close to where we live, where we walk down Pipe Duke uh, during the summer months when it's uh, not flooded. Beautiful area, and uh, welcome back. Hope you had a really, really brilliant week, wherever you are. Um, this weekend, I'm just going to tackle the issue of a lock key, a, a Triumph Stag lock key that we were missing for our boot lock on our Triumph Stag and I kind of been on a bit of a journey with it trying to get various kind of blanks fitted not actually having the original key which has been a real problem um, so what I've done is I've managed to pull it all to bits uh, finally get a, 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 the problem sorted and I thought I'd share with you some of the techniques and some of the things I found along the way if you are in the process of taking your boot lock off your Triumph Stag or maybe even on other Triumphs as well then I'm sure some of these tips and insights will help in your uh, dismantling of the, of the actual lock and then putting it back together and also what to watch for uh, in terms of new keys and that kind of thing. So let's go and have a look. Uh, I'll tackle straight in and show you uh, my boots lock in bits. Okay so um, I've split it all down into its kind of component parts um, and let me just talk you through the various pieces. This is the bit that you can see obviously on the back of the boot uh, under slung at the back if you imagine that's the boot lid coming in here and that's where your barrel uh, goes in there which we're all pretty familiar with I'm fairly sure so that's all of that there this uh, gasket uh, just goes underneath on the uh, the body work itself so as you screw this into the base of the boot obviously that protects it and makes sure it doesn't scratch it so that's all nicely uh, tucked in there which is great um, and then if I talk through the actual mechanism itself this is where it gets a bit complicated so here's your barrel and um, it's not quite set up right yet. I've obviously got to get it back into this piece here in a minute and make the mistake I didn't make is actually just to push it back in carefully uh, through here. There's a slot in the bottom and you can see there's a couple of tangs here, here and here. So you just got to make sure that they align with the slot that you can just about see in there. And then in that way it will nicely drop in and instantly that those do move so just be careful of that I'll take it off for a minute so just be careful so that's in and that's obviously what we recognize from the back of the car now um, I love to do this off camera but there's a little circlet that goes in the top here and that actually secures against a little ridge which you can just see on the inside there so it's got to drop all the way down to that level before then you get your circlet pliers of which I have a pair over here somewhere and I think throw things at me um, and uh, clearly these will go in here and here uh, such that you can then expand the or contract the circlip to then slot in the back of here and hold it tight so that then is a body in its own right. So that's the coming plan. I'll get on with that in just a second and come back to you in just a minute. So let's just take that off and uh, we'll use it again in a bit. Um, inside, so um, that obviously pushes this tab here and that is then attached, if you imagine that's in situ in the back of the boot, uh, attached to the lid facing you at the back and here's the mechanism. So when that key uh, turns and you push your button here, it push rods onto that, which as you can see is moving that block near my left thumb which obviously then releases it against the catch that's at the very back of the boot as you stick your head on the inside and look back at yourself you'll see there's a, uh, a mating surface and that that is how it works it's a simple fulcrum system just to release it that way all operated by this uh, which is attached to this bit here and I'll show you this in just a second because this is a right fiddle a to get off and b to get back on um, anyway I shall cover that in just a second. So just coming back to those little push rods I was talking about, they're all uh, cleverly intermingled and clip on. This is one that's actually inside the boot. Uh, if you can just follow me, they actually snap on and snap off there. I don't know if you saw that, but that's down loose and allow the push rod to come out. So leaving the plastic tang inside there that can then be fed out. They're a bit of a fiddle to get in and out, but basically you've got to squeeze them to push them through and then they'll come through the hole if you want to remove them or put a new one in. Obviously I don't. Um, so it's quite a clever little kind of um, 
kind of washer and plastic tang method of holding the rod together. But if I get the rod back out again, let's just put it, put it back in. So that bit's plastic back in. And notice it's split as well deliberately so you can wriggle it in. So that uh, the rod goes in so, uh, and obviously that's fine. Now that clips up so on there and that keeps it all in place. So that's how it actually works. And I hope that helps anybody else who's struggling trying to get these things out of the boot because they're not easy. Now the tricky bit and why this whole unit came out all for the sake of changing a key uh, or getting a new key, I had to get a new lock and everything else I'll, I'll talk you through that in a second, was because this beam here goes through some metal work of the uh, the boot frame itself. So um, I'll show you later, but that actually goes through some solid bits of metal work. It's quite a tight fit. So you can't easily um, get much play this end in the orifice that you've got, which is a very small square at the back of the boot lid. So thus I took the whole mechanism off. It's quite easily done, two bolts just drop off. I think there's a cover over the top of it. You take those three screws off and drop it off and that's it. Um, and here we are. And when we get back into the car, obviously I'll be doing this the right one once I fix this, but this then connects to here. And as you'll see before, we, we disconnect the, uh, the little tang if we can. Um, obviously it's been on here for a number of years. So it's a little tricky to, to ping off, but it should just come off. Nice and easy, lemon squeezy, there you go, no, maybe not. Okay, so then all we do then is just pop this off now. Looks like someone's put this on really hard. <laughs> that might even be rusted on. But that has to come off like you saw the other one. Ow, oh there you go, it's come off. <laughs> Okay, good. All right, so you get to see that now. So that's that's actually the, the tang. All right, so that comes off there. And as we said before, a little bit of plastic inside to hold it nice and neat. And that holds the rod eventually. So you put your, your uh, rod end in first. In fact, there's another bit of plastic here. So there should be two bits of plastic there, um, which I will put together nice and neatly. Maybe best to take it off again. Okay, so a bit of plastic north, a bit of plastic south. This is why there's such a fiddle because they do break. Um, and then we're going to go back on here with this. Right, well, after much fiddling, um, the two halves of plastic have gone back through the hole and you can see now that that is ready to be clipped on to the tab and locked off on here, which will then lock it all back onto the rod and keep it all safe. Um, thus splaying these bits of plastic into this hole, which then will be retained. All right, I won't click it on now because obviously we need to get this through the hole and then it's good to go. <laughs> what a palaver. Now, earlier on in this week, it seems like about 100 million years ago, um, I was after a new key. Uh, there was no key for this particular uh, stag uh, boot lock, so that's the one. Uh, if it helps anybody else, these are Union keys, Union standard keys. If it helps you take a picture of that and take to your locksmith, that will help them narrow down which, it, which key it is that you actually need. Um, in this particular one, uh, we were struggling to get any key to fit and they kept saying, we've got to have the barrel. We've got, we've got to know the number on the barrel, otherwise we can't we can't help you. So, okay, so backwards and forwards I went. Um, on one afternoon, I managed uh, to squeeze this and I wish I'd stopped there rather than taking it all to bits. But if you carefully look alongside there, if you push your, your barrel in, your spring in, you'll see there, there is a number. In this case, it is number 949, all right? So that is the key code number they need for your car um, boot lock if you need it, all right? So that takes a bit of looking. You can actually see it when it's still in the mechanism if you push it in, all right? And then that way you can see the number 949 is the number 
that is the code for the key for this little lock. And I'm um, not quite sure what happened yesterday because they did make me one. I took it in, um, they gave me the key, 949 we said, and it wouldn't turn. Um, so thus I then had to take the whole blinking thing out. Um, I've then been in today with the barrel lock itself and they've said, oh, actually perhaps we hadn't quite um, ground the tang down as much as we should have done. So thanks very much. It's taken all afternoon to get the blinking lock up. It's going to take me a significant time to get the lock back in again. But as you can see there, um, them having looked at it a second time, I've now got two fresh keys which will lock the lock. Happy days. Yeah, so that's, that's where your number is on that slider. Just remember, push down whilst it's in the lock and you'll see the number. There it is, 949. By the way, this stag is anonymous, so um, you won't know which stag it's off for anybody who's thinking of seeing what's in my boot. It's not a lot anyway, there's only a box of sandwiches anyhow. And just a word about reassembly. <clears throat> As I mentioned earlier, um, when you're putting it back into the uh, the holder that goes on the, the back of the boot, uh, there's this groove in the bottom that this tang here has to slide into. Also got to be married up with here. Um, it's easier if you can see that back plate um, once it's free to move, look, you can actually see that back plate needs to slide over that raised 949 coding. All right, so don't try as I did just now, uh, 180 degrees out, I think it was. Uh, that needs to be able to slide. All right, then as you put it back into the carrier. And a little top tip, don't forget to put your O-ring over the chrome to keep it watertight when you put it back in before you then slide it into the carrier as I've just described. Um, the tricky bit would appear to be now trying to get it to drop far enough in so I can get this here um, circle it seated properly to retain it. So I'll uh, crack on with that and come back to you shortly but now you can see it's got a nice rubber seal around here so there's not going to be any water ingress in there so that's good news. And just a tiny point of order here um, this recess designed to take this o-ring was covered with all sorts of grubby bits of mud and crud so I've actually had to just, uh, screwdriver it out such that the o-ring will then seat properly in that so it's quite a deep slot there so it just needs to be cleaned out so it's a seat properly and presumably could then help us get it back into the barrel a bit further. Okay, I'll confess, this is Mr. Thicky, Stupid, TR Tony, Thicky, Stupid, Thicky, Thicky, Stupid, Stupid, Thicky. Uh, confession over with. I'm trying to get this um, circlip into this hole here. Can't quite work out why on earth this appeared to be further down in the recess when I got it out. It needs to go down a little bit further than it does. Well, of course, it will. All you've got to do is push it in it. Okay? Just push it down. And then you'll create the space in which you can then put your circlip. Obviously I'm only doing this um, with two hands. Could do with somebody else's help maybe, but uh, take my word for it. That actually springs down, thus creating the space for you to put your circlip on. I've been sat here for ages wondering how on earth I was going to make it shorter. But of course that is how the thing works. So uh, apologies on Mr Thicky's behalf, but uh, that's how you get your circlip back in. Bit of, bit of fiddle I'm sure, but I'll give it a go and uh, come back to you shortly, hopefully when it's seated in the appropriate ring, which is quite a way down there. As you can see, it's down there, uh, not, not at the lip. OK. All right, so that's how you open it up to get it into place. Um, I will try this live and broadcast a quality Harry the Stag desk, if we can. I'm not quite sure how to... Well, no, it goes in. It's just not going in. <laughs> Probably doesn't help doing it next to the screw. Okay, so. So presumably you just literally push it in. I wonder if that needs to go. in. 
just needs to be pushed in. Ah, I think we might have done it. Not very uh, ladylike, but I think we have we have victory. Okay, good. So that's where the circlet goes. I'm not sure it's actually seated quite right. I'll just need to fiddle about with it off camera, but suffice to say, that's how you get it back in. Um, and now the mechanism, there's your push rod motion that goes on here. Remember, so that goes there. Imagine when it's all connected back up and this goes forward with that motion push rod there, thus releasing your boot lock. Hurrah! Happy days. Jobs are good. I better just check the key. <laughs> After all that faff yesterday. Bear with me. Let's just. see that's so what that does that locks it and then stops it you can't push it against see the hole there when you turn the key you're locating back that tang which then means it can come forward otherwise when you lock it it will not come forward quite ingenious really simple but ingenious and that now is locked open Okay, let's get it back on the car. Okay, so here we are back in the boot well of the stag and you can see the locking mechanism uh, just resting on the back there with the rod I was just showing you through poking through the hole. You can see, oh dear, there's not a lot of room to manoeuvre in there and uh, I was just propping that up with a screwdriver just temporarily. I'm trying to get as much of that end out as I possibly can so I can then get to fix the boot lock on it. Um, as you can see this locking mechanism sits up inside. There's a couple of bolts that go through uh, underneath I've just showed you there but the skill now is to try and get that boot lock connected back up to that connecting rod uh, from the control rod there. So a little bit of a fiddle to say the least but never mind we will prevail and um, one thing I did have to do was use Harry's picking tool just to get the wire uh, wiring out of the way because it was restricting access of the rod coming through. So now finally having got access to that end of that push rod you can see here I'm just offering up the boot lock to the plastic wedges, it's the only way I can describe them, uh, in the hole there. Um, so it's quite a fiddle to try and get those over them. Um, I did take it out briefly and just to show you those are the plastic inserts there in the tang of the boot lock. That isn't actually correct because what you've got to try and do is get the plastic outer above the metal locking uh, tab, which I'll show you in just a second, you can see beneath me, then the push rod and then that will lock it all up nicely with the plastic tangs coming out the other side to lock it all off so it won't pull out and as you can see here I finally got some success and getting it in it was quite a fiddle it really was but there you go you can see the plastic on the outside then the metal washer of the locking device then the metal of the lock itself and then the plastic tangs coming out on the right hand side there which then will lock that push rod in meaning it won't come out too easily and uh, or at all and uh, then it will work perfectly once it's all back in place. Happy days! What a fiddle! Okay now we've got the boot lock back in place it's all connected back up you can see the two screws here holding it to the decking of the boot and also two I think there were 10 mm uh, bolts that hold the main mechanism in. You can see there the, uh, the locking mechanism hanging down and uh, just needs tightening up and so on but in broad terms it's actually in the car so very pleased about that after all that fiddling and uh, appears to be working absolutely fine and uh, yeah once tightened up you can then just test it and there you can see 
the rotation of the lock, which then holds on to the female bit back in the back of the boot, and uh, jobs are good. All right, guys, so hopefully that was useful. Um, it's been a bit of a journey, to say the least. Uh, these locks are very simple, but of course, if you haven't got the right code or the key or don't know how to pull these things apart, it can be a bit of a nightmare. Because obviously it's a security thing. You want to put stuff in the boot safely and uh, to be able to lock it. And of course, to be able to reopen it would be a, a really good thing. So we've sorted that out now. Hopefully that's been useful. Um, we've got a couple of keys now for... Uh, well, one spare and one a, a kind of daily use, so uh, security is assured. Um, if you've got any questions or comments, please feel free to let us know and ask any questions. Always happy to help. Uh, and as ever, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. There's an opportunity at the end of this film to press the button. I'll also put in another little video for you to look at as well, which may be useful uh, to review. Apart from that, I think that's about it from us for this weekend. Hope you're staying safe wherever you are. Um, just one final point is if you've got any... Uh, um, photographs or videos of your car that you'd like to send in um, we will have a look at them and maybe we can include them on a future uh, Ari the Stag video or on the Ari the Stag Saturday Sockets which is an email list you can join and that goes out every Saturday so around about 300 people I think currently so all going well. Good stuff well I'll leave you with a picture of the swans I hope you enjoy the scenery and uh, we'll see you online on Ari the Stag very soon. Cheers for now guys bye. <laughs>